Welcome, I'm Dr. May Seibel, and I want to welcome you to the Facebook Live, and we are going to be talking about bioidentical hormones. Before we get started, I hope you've been having a great summer. I hope that it's been a time where you've had a little bit of bit opportunity to take some time off and spend time with family and friends, or just get to do some of the things you really enjoy doing, because summer seems to be so short. It's already the middle of July, it's just zipping by. And it's really a great time to kind of prop your feet up higher in your family and just have some time to relax with friends and family. Hi Janet, great to see you here. I hope you're having a great night. And I hope that bioidentical hormones is something that you really want to talk about. If bioidentical hormones is something that you want to talk about, just let me know. Say yes. Let me know that it's something that you're uh, interested in because I want to try and answer questions for you and we'll start off with a little bit of a discussion. And you know it's still early so if you have friends that would benefit please share this with them so that they will come on and join us because it's great to have people uh, that can benefit and um, also it's great if you like it uh, to click on like so that I can send you other things that I do from Facebook Live and let you know when they're happening. I'm glad you're doing great, Janet, because um, it's really um, it's really great. And thank you for sharing this with your friends. Well, I wanted to talk about bioidentical hormones because bioidentical hormones, one of the questions I get asked about so much today, I um, am on the faculty at Harvard Medical School at Beth Israel Hospital where I see patients. And also when I do coaching consultations with people from around the country, or actually from around the world who are not able to get to Boston where I am located, uh, Many of the times they want to talk about bioidentical hormones because it's something they've heard a lot about and they are somewhat confused about because uh, there have been so much misinformation about it. First of all, what are bioidentical hormones? Well, bioidentical hormones are the hormones that are the same identical shape, the same chemical structure as the ones that you make in your body naturally. And there are three main ones. There's estrone or E1, estradiol or E2, and estriol or E3. And estradiol is the one you hear the most about. It's the most abundant one. And it's the one that's primarily made in the ovaries. And estradiol is about 12 times more potent than the uh, estrone and much, much more potent than that of estriol. And the thing that's important about to realize is while these bioidentical hormones are the same shape, the same chemical structure as what's made in your body, they're not natural. A lot of people think they're natural, but in fact, it takes about 15 chemical processes to turn the precursors that do come from plants like soy or uh, other uh, plant substances, uh, sweet potatoes for instance, certain sweet potatoes, yams, uh, they are 15 processes that turn those, harm, those precursors into the actual bioidentical hormones. So the only plant that bioidenticals come from is the chemical plant. We, our bodies don't have the enzymes, the necessary steps that turn these precursors into the uh, hormones that are useful in our bodies and so we have to depend on chemical plants to do that for us. Now you can get bioidentical hormones from uh, a variety of places. The most common place are compounding drugstores and the compounding drugstores do do a great job and they are the same bioidentical hormones however that are available at the standard drugstores like the Rite Aid and the CVS and the Walgreens and and uh, so forth and so on. So they are the same bioidentical hormones but I have to say that the hormones that come, the bioidentical ones that are from the drugstores, the chain store drugstores are FDA approved whereas the ones that are 
from the compounding pharmacies are not FDA approved. So the benefits of having bioidentical hormones from a chain store pharmacy is that every pill or every uh, spray or every gel or every patch you get has very stringent guidelines to make sure that what you get is exactly the same as what your doctor ordered. But that's not the case necessarily at the compounding uh, drug stores. And the reason for that is they mix it one at a time and it doesn't always work out to be exactly what the doctor ordered. And in fact, in a very important study that is talked about, that, it, that I report about in my book, The Estrogen Window, which goes into all of that. And um, in the study that was done in which the bioidentical prescription, the prescription for bioidentical hormones was sent to 12 different compounding pharmacies. Those prescriptions were filled and then sent to a chemical plant for analysis. And it turned out that all 12 had different amounts of hormones in them. They weren't tightly uh, close to what was ordered. And it turns out that the estrogen that is in the bioidentical ones and the uh, prescriptions that were filled was somewhere between 60 and 200 percent more. Um, Sharon, a good evening. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you being here and please feel free to share this with your friends so that they can join. And I want to continue to say that the estradiol was uh, up between 60 and 200 percent higher than what was the prescription asked for and the progesterone in general was about 60 to 80 percent lower than what the prescription requested and what's happening is what we're seeing is reports in the literature in the scientific literature that are showing that it turns out that there's starting to be reported cases of uterine cancer from women who are getting this information. And the reason for that is, is they're getting so much more estrogen and so little progesterone. So if you're gonna take bioidenticals from a uh, drugstore that is compounding, and make sure that your healthcare provider is checking your uh, uterine lining so that you don't have that risk because there are no reports of that coming when it's taken estrogen and progesterone are both given from chain store uh, bioidentical uh, products. Now, let me pause for a second and any questions that you have or things that you're curious about. And if you're finding this helpful, uh, let me know. Just say yes, it's helpful because I want to find the information that is helpful to you so that you can figure it out and not have to tough it out and be healthy and happy and hormonally balanced. I've told this story in the past, but I'll say the reason that I am so passionate about helping women at this time of life is because uh, in 2002, there was a study that incorrectly said that estrogen caused breast cancer, heart disease, and other things. And it turns out that seven months after that, my wife had surgery that threw her into early menopause. And when that happened seven months after the Women's Health Initiative or the WHI story uh, study came out, uh, her doctors were reluctant to treat her with hormones. And so I was one of the top infertility specialists at that time and shifted over. I say I used to do sperm to term, but I shifted to womb to tomb. And I shifted over to uh, the menopause side to help her figure it out so she wouldn't have to tough it out. Uh, would it be safe, Lorraine is asking, would it be safe to stay on bioidentical hormones for life since they're so helpful for many issues? You know, it's a, it's a very good question and people always wonder when, and as I mentioned in my book, The Estrogen Window, there is a time that's best to start hormones in the estrogen window. And for some women, there's a time that's best to stop them. Can you stay on them for life if you don't have cancer, if you don't have a medical reason that you uh, can't take them, 
if the dose is working well for you, if you don't have any other medical conditions that are affecting you that your doctor or healthcare provider feels estrogen could uh, negatively impact or you don't develop other medical conditions as you age on a one by one basis, there are people who can stay on it a longer window of time. And as a matter of fact, the North American Menopause Society came out with a, a statement saying that you could, for some women, if it was appropriate for them, and if they started early, it's not good to start it at, say, 65, but let's say you've been on it. For some women, it will be appropriate to keep them on it for uh, a longer window of time, even beyond age 65. And these are the kind of things when I'm coaching women from around the country that I get asked about it, that I talk about, and that is generally helpful uh, to them to find out. So sometimes, yes, but as a general statement, it depends on the individual. Let's see. Natural remedies for hot flashes. Uh, we have a, um, I have a lot of content for hot flashes. And if we have time, I'll come back to that. But I've just developed a whole new program for hot flashes. That wasn't the topic for this evening, but I have a whole new program. It's called the Hot Flash Rescue Kit. And I've just started it. Now, it's one of the most common questions I get, and I wanted to make it available for as many people as I can to help them cool those hot flashes. And if you went to hotflashrescuekit.com, hotflashrescuekit.com, you will find it. And it's being, it is available and it's available at the beginning while I've just rolled it out so I can help as many women as I can. It's under $20. So if you go there now, you can get it for that. But I'll come back to the story of natural remedies for hot flashes, depending on the time we have. Um, so Maria Luisa is saying, I have one year without periods, but my menopause is bad hot sweats and, uh, at night. And uh, what would be good to take? Well, this kind of ties in with the last question, but uh, I will say to you that for hot flashes, I mean, there's just such a whole range of things. And just to sum it up very briefly, uh, there's the uh, lifestyle things that you can do and change. There are uh, over-the-counter products that you can take. There are uh, psychological and behavioral things that you can do. There are uh, non-estrogen prescriptions available. And there are, of course, estrogen products available. By far, the most effective is estrogen. But if you can't or won't take estrogen, there's a whole host of things. And I do cover all of this in detail in the um, Hot Flash Rescue Kit. If you're able to take estrogen, that's definitely your best uh, benefit for it. Uh, because about 98% of people who take estrogen for hot flashes are going to be helped. And also, um, I have a free gift if you're interested. If you go to um, hotflashgift.com, you can get a free, it's 10 uh, mistakes that women make that trigger hot flashes. So it's hotflashgift.com. And if you go there, you will find um, a free download that will tell you some things to avoid so you have less hot flashes. Um, so if we're, we have a moment and pause and questions, so I'll just say that some of the natural things that you can take, I think soy is a good thing to take, and how much and how which ones and so forth, is more than I'm going to talk about here because I've actually done a whole um, Facebook Live just on hot flashes that you can go back and see. Uh, but uh, soy is very good. Another one that is over the counter is something that is called black cohosh. 
the most uh, common brand of that is Remy Femin. And then there is uh, iCool, Estraven. There are a number of products that some women find helpful. Flax seeds sometimes are helpful for women. So there are a number of, uh, of natural products that are available. As I've said in the past, and I'll mention it here to help you more, is that the most important thing when you try natural things is to realize that if you use natural products, and I'm thinking here about supplements and foods and things like that, then you have to realize that it's not the same strength as medications. So my recommendation to you is to try one thing at a time, and then try it for about two to three months so you give it a fair chance. And then if you're not happy with how you feel, stop it, discontinue it, and then start up with some next, your next choice. Because if you start mixing and matching these things, it's gonna end up being A, very expensive. There's a lot of uh, overlap with these things. And you'll end up buying two and three and four supplements. You won't know which one is helping you and which one isn't helping you. Uh, what things have you tried? Tell me what you've tried. Or tell me, if you've used bioidentical hormones, what's been your experience? Have you had a good experience with bioidentical hormones? Uh, what do you use? Uh, do you use um, creams? Are you using pellets? I wonder just how many of you are using pellets? Have you tried those yet for bioidentical hormones? Pellets are these little, uh, they're about an inch and a half long, and they look like, I mean, they kind of look like if you ever buy those pellets for a fireplace, or if you had pets, some of the food comes and looks like pellets. It's pressed in these little, like little, looks like a little piece of wood, but it's not. It, and they're put in under the skin with a small incision and they're pushed in under the skin with a instrument and then the plunger is pushed in and the pellet stays under the skin for a good bit of time, about up to three months for some people. And then um, there's a, usually a stitch that's put in the skin and then you come back in three months and you do it again. And um, the thing is, is that these are kind of worrisome because the levels get very high. And if you have a problem, you can't fish that pellet out. You know, it's very hard. So I know a lot of people love them, and this will go against what a lot of people like. But the data are such that, you know, these are, you have to use them with some degree of realization that they're not regulated, that the levels can stay up for a long time after they're inserted and the levels can reach extremely high uh, amounts because it's not the absorption is so variable so just be cautious about this uh, i know there are places around the country where this is popular and there are women who like it and a lot of women will say to me you know well gee i feel so good on the pellets well, that's fine, that's terrific. But you would also feel good on other forms of estrogen that are FDA approved. Now, I don't have any um, investment or financial benefits from any pharmaceutical. I don't have any benefits from pellets. I don't have any from any of these companies. So I'm just, all I'm doing is sharing with you what the data show, what the information shows to try and help you so that you make the best choices. And at the very least, it, I encourage you to uh, be informed, and I'm glad you're here, so that you know if you're talking with your healthcare provider, you have a voice. I want you to become a partner with your healthcare provider. Uh, how many of you get enough time when you go to the doctor? Do you ever find out you just never have enough time to talk about everything? Or you don't get all your questions answered? Or you feel like they're not listening to when you talk to them? I mean, this stuff is very uh, upsetting for people. And a lot of times you walk in and you have all these concerns and you walk out and you still have your concerns. And that's why uh, I'm doing this, because I want you to walk in with information that you can talk about and really 
discuss this, at least to the extent that it's their experience. Other things you'd like to talk about, I'd like to answer as many questions as I can. So please um, share um, your thoughts and uh, let me know. I mean, have you, if you use pellets, have they worked great for you? Have you tried uh, compounded creams? Have you compared the compounded creams with the ones that are in the regular drugstores? What's been your experience? What do you want to know about bioidentical estrogens or hormones that would most benefit you? How can I help you here? Because that's what I'm here for. I want to tell you that if you're trying to figure out how much your uh, menopause experience or this time of life is affecting you, uh, I have a free quiz. I put the URL up in the uh, header up above at the top. But if you do go to menopausequiz.com, if you haven't taken this quiz, it's a free quiz. It takes about maybe two minutes. You'll get some information that will tell you how much menopause is affecting you. It's interactive and you rank your top symptoms and see what it is. If you have taken the quiz, you can always take it again because you'll see how it's changed since the last time that you took it. I got one of these mason jars from my glass. I love these old mason jars. So I like to put, they hold a lot and I put tea in it or water in it. It's a great thing to sip on. Um, other questions that you may have, because I'd like to answer uh, whatever's on your mind at this time. While we have a pause for a minute, I'm going to ask you, what topics would you like to talk about that would be most helpful to you? What are the things you want to know? What are the things that are worrying you? What are the things that are on your mind? Because might as well, we're here Let's go over the stuff that can help you the most. Uh, what kinds of things, what questions do you have? <clears throat> Just write it in and let me know because what I do is I try to meet with you each week uh, at 9 o'clock on Thursdays Eastern Time and then occasionally I have other ones that come in uh, because uh, there's a if you like the page, I'll be able to send you a notice of other Facebook Lives. And there's a lot of stuff coming up that I want to uh, be talking about. One of the things I've noticed in talking with women about the bioidenticals is a lot of people think, you know, that they are um, safer than drugstore hormones and in fact they're not safer or less safe now it all depends on knowing how much you're getting so if you got an equal amount of one or the other it would be comparable it's just that you have to make sure that you do know because the reason that the compounding ones have more challenges is it's made one at a time and it's kind of like when you go in the ice cream store and you get your M&Ms put in or your um, Reese's Pieces, whatever you got, put it in your ice cream and you know how they stir it all up. And then you go and get a bite out, a scoop, a taste out of your ice cream. Sometimes you get a bunch of M&Ms and sometimes you don't get any. And that's what happens when they make the mixes for the uh, bioidentical hormones because what happens is they have a vat of a substance, like a cream or something, and then they put in the hormones and then it's, it's stirred up and then you get a scoop of it for your prescription. And so sometimes they give more in that particular one than what was expected. So, um, other things that you'd like to know. So Wanda is saying that I have symptoms of depression. You know, depression is a very big problem in this country. There's a lot going on. And um, 
what I would like to say to you is, is that first of all, if you are feeling sad uh, or depressed, first of all, I want to say that in menopause, right around this time of life, that those feelings are normal. They happen to a lot of people. Anxiety and depression are very, very common. I spent time working with women in the Department of Psychiatry and a lot of women who have underlying mental health problems like sadness, depression, particularly if they have a history of PMS or postpartum depression, when they hit menopause, it just throws everything off whack. Now, if your depression lasts for over two weeks, that's a clinical depression. And if you ever feel so sad that you feel that you might want to harm yourself or feel bad, that's the time you really need to talk with your healthcare provider and let them know so they can help you. But symptoms of depression will often be helped by sleeping better, which is a whole discussion we just did last week that. Um, we're, there's also uh, exercise can help, hormone therapy can help, antidepressants can help, psychotherapy can help, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a form of uh, meditation and, and psycho, and, uh, and um, kind of hypnotism kind of a thing. These are all techniques that can work. Talk with your healthcare provider about it because a lot can be done. Uh, what is safe thing to use? Well, let me just say, and that is Diamond. What a great name. I love Diamond. That's a beautiful name. Um, so anyway, Diamond, safe things are really depends on your health history and of course certain things come with their own risks. Most of the things out there can be safe if they're used in the appropriate person, someone who doesn't have a reason not to use it, and somebody who is getting the appropriate dosages. So everything can be safe, but you have to understand how to use it. A lot of that is what I talk about when I'm coaching people. They're always wondering how much, how long, what dose, and all of these things are always confusing. And they are challenging because you just get so little time to talk. And also because there's just so much um, misinformation out there. So uh, what I, I would say to you is to make sure you understand what symptoms that you have understand how severe your symptoms are and really think about that and then with that information when you talk to your health care provider try to uh, get what will best serve you what i talked about with hormones and don't misunderstand me i don't necessarily think hormones are for everyone but for people who do take them the benefit of the hormones are is that when you take a hormone it goes to every cell in your body so if you feel sad, it affects you, it helps you. If you have uh, foggy thinking, it's helpful. If you have palpitations in your chest because of menopause, it's helpful. If you have sensitive bladder or a dry vagina, etc., all can be helped. When you use alternative approaches, you tend to help this thing or that thing or the other thing, and so you have to be much more uh, specific, and you have to many times use multiple things. So I have done a Facebook Live, I forget how many weeks ago, but we did a whole thing on alternative approaches. But safety depends on your personal risk and it depends on your um, uh, how much you use of a given product, the dosage and how frequent and so forth. But if it's done correctly, for most people, you can try most of the things that are available. And I do recommend if one thing doesn't work, don't be afraid to try something else because as I say, everything works for somebody and nothing works for everybody. So it's important to give yourself the benefit of everything that's out there. And it's one of the things that I uh, talk about a lot with people, with patients, with coaching clients and so forth because you gotta find what works for you. I believe that whether you use hormones or you don't, there's, you have to take care of the some of you and not just, you know, some of you. And that's a fundamental belief of mine. And that's the only way to really get 
uh, an individual beneficial effect that will work for you and help you to feel healthy, happy, and hormonally balanced. It's not going to be one size fits all. I mean, you ever go in the store and they have those, you know, you buy a shirt or you buy a, a pajama or a nightgown or something. It's one size fits all. I never understood that. I can't imagine that one size, at least in medicine, fits everybody. And that's why the individualization, having it work out for you personally, have it understood that every person has unique uh, risks, has unique uh, areas of likes and dislikes, tolerance and intolerance and so forth. It's really important to find out what is best for you. Well, we're coming to a close now. And uh, before we do, are there any other uh, questions before we uh, stop? I want to um, encourage you, if you haven't already done so, to take the uh, menopause quiz. Go to menopausequiz.com, get the free quiz, and start getting a few tips uh, that, that you'll get a scoring immediately of where you are and how much it's impacting you, and you'll get some tips that come to your inbox right after. And also, since we've had talking about hot flashes, uh, if you go to hotflashgift.com, you'll get a opportunity to um, get a download. It's a free download, and it's 10 mistakes that people make that trigger hot flashes. And that can be a very helpful uh, thing to know about because just by not doing a couple of very simple things you can figure that out. So uh, once again I'm Dr. Mesh and you are on Ask Dr. Mesh. This is Facebook Live. We've been talking about bioidentical hormones. I hope that you will share this with your friends. I, I appreciate uh, Janet. I know that you did and some others did. Thank you very much for uh, sharing it. I really appreciate it. Let your friends know about it. If you have topics that you want, uh, let me know about it. If this has been helpful to you, uh, just say yes. Just type in yes. And also, if you have questions that come to your mind afterwards, I will circle back and I try to answer, I try to answer as many as I can of any of the questions. And sometimes during our live Facebook, discussions, we may get fewer questions occasionally and I find that over the next 24 hours uh, people will find out about it and then they'll come on and they'll ask a number of questions. So I encourage you to do that because I want you to get the information that you need, as I said, to help you figure it out so you don't have to tough it out. I hope you'll have a great week. I hope you will go out and enjoy uh, this coming weekend, get out in the sunshine for a few minutes, get out and prop up your feet, do some things that are fun in the sun, and also take time to relax and enjoy every day. Make it special. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Mesh, and have a really great evening.